with Paddy Power. Gamble responsibly. Gamblingcare.ie. Now, I definitely want to thank our next guest for giving us her time. Marcela Mora Irahu is in Argentina. Marcela, you can hear me? Yes, I can. So, uh, give us a, a sense of what the day has been like in Argentina thus far. So, I think it, it was a, it was a very sudden kind of murmur over the city. He's died. He's died without a, a name attached to it. And then uh, the, the the media confirmed it, and so it, obviously it became quite um, uh, you know a, a more manifest piece of real news. I think there are people already beginning to kind of pilgrimage to where he was convalescing and to uh, where he's lived. Uh, obviously, there will be tributes at the various clubs. And national mourning has been declared by the government three days. And, and really, it's kind of nonstop coverage. But I don't sense yet, uh, uh, you know, people in the streets being uh, overtly unhappy or uh, weepy. I think, in a way, it's almost like we've been prepared for this uh, for a few weeks. Although it was a huge, huge shock, I think a lot of people still think that maybe Maradona would never die. But it's not really quite um, sank in yet. Yes, I suspect your phone is going to be ringing a lot over the next couple of days. Uh, how do, yes. <laughs> how, how do you begin to put what he represented and what he did and the life he lived and what he means to Argentina into some, some kind of words? Well, I think he, has, uh, he was many, uh, uh, many manifestations of, of the things he did and what he did. And he, he emerged as a super talent very, very young, as a, as, a, as, a, as a child almost. And then he was left out of the 1978 World Cup squad uh, to much, uh, you know, he, he himself said that was an awful pain and something he never got over. But, but a lot of people wanted him in the squad because he was already deemed one of the best players uh, out there. And then he became the hero in the 1979 Youth World Cup squad, which is something that is often difficult to convey outside Argentina. But with him, there is a whole generation, which I consider myself a part of, that grew up watching Youth World Cups and being familiar with the youth teams in the lower divisions, because that was his first major uh, kind of appearance on a world stage. And then he very quickly became a conflicted and conflicting celebrity. He, he, he was a superstar. He wore uh, fur coats and earrings and he, you know, he had open problems with, uh, with substance abuse and so on. But by 1986, where he had already been through an incredible arch of uh, highs and lows and played in Barcelona and Napoli and he uh, hit lows that no man has ever hit before and highs that no man has ever hit before, he won the World Cup and then became a sensation and a national hero, not just for winning the World Cup, but I think but for the way he played and, uh, and, and the cheekiness and the controversy. He had those few minutes where he did a a hand goal that was considered an awful cheat and a superb dribble past seven English players, mm. which is considered the goal of the century. So that kind of encapsulates his ability to be good and evil and beauty and, and, and ugliness. After that, he then had several re-emergences. You know, he was a manager in 2010. A lot of us didn't believe he would be able to pull that off, but he did, and he did well, and he enamored the, the kind of world uh, media. And he had a TV show that was incredibly successful before that, and he had another TV show that was very successful during the 2014 World Cup. So he's never really been far from the screen, from the media glare, and from people's perception of him. His personal life has been incredibly turbulent and complicated, and a lot of people have found uh, that an outlet for the judgmental, mm. less enamored side of, of him, and fi have found it easy to to criticize him. So he's by no means, um, you know, saintly or above criticism, but he's conveyed everything that, that humans can be uh, constantly, I would say, you know, for over 50 years, and it's a huge hole that he will leave behind in, in, in public life as a celebrity and as a, 
as a star, as a superstar. Yes, and I know from our recent conversation that, for instance, and people may not be aware, whether or not he was recognising certain children had played out almost like a soap opera in the Argentinian media. You know, his children were almost household names. That's right. I mean, Hannah, uh, one of his daughters who, who, who was acknowledged after a, a lawsuit, had a TV show. Um, Diego Jr., who was born in Italy, has been in and out of the media glare for many, many years um, because Maradona denied his fatherhood for, for a long time, but then it was proven that there may be more. But I think this is something that we've all come to kind of view as part and parcel of, of who he is and, and how he lived his life. And I think uh, perhaps today isn't the time to... Um, pass any form of, of value judgment other than to condolences to, to them all who have lost a father. And uh, I think perhaps, you know, there will be some unity in the mourning together. Who knows? When you talk there about what he did in 86, and obviously at that stage he's, he's based in Naples and previous to that had been in, in Barcelona. It's obviously um, an incredibly volatile politically in Argentina, socially. Where, where does he fit into that whole side of things? I, I think his political um, standing is overrated. I mean, he's managed... Ah, pity. <laughs> we expected that might happen. That's Marcela Mora Irahu with us uh, live from Argentina today, where news is obviously broken that Maradona has passed away aged 60. We did, by the way, if you're interested in a more complete chat with Marcela, as you can hear, she's a brilliant contributor. We spoke to her about two, three weeks ago. It was around the time Maradona had had the brain clot surgery and uh, survived. And at that stage, his health prospects were looking uh, a bit better, certainly, than what's transpired. But we talked to Marcella for about 25 minutes uh, that evening. And it's on YouTube if you want to go and check it out. And she talked about it. Uh, huge chunks of his career in a bit more uh, detail and had a bit more time to do it. So we'll take a short ad break. That was Marcela Mora Irahu, and we have Ronan Agara after 8 o'clock on the football show. Peter Reid's going to join us. Graeme Soon is going to join us. We'll pick a few more brains on the passing of Diego Maradona. Maradona just walked away from Hotheland. Maldonado. Testing to the referee, but the little man who started it by walking past Glenn Hoddle, that's where the ball came from Hodge, Maradona had continued the run forward, and the goal is given.